In this video today, we're going to be making and painting these awesome bases for our miniatures. Let's go. So being a miniature painter, I post a lot of photos on my Facebook and Instagram. And a lot of the questions that I receive is how I actually do some basing. So I will answer that question today, include some variations, and I will also show you a money saving tip. Because more money equals more miniatures, right? So let's start at the beginning and get some references. We are looking at two books here. The first is Gondor in Flames. And we are looking at you, good side. We can see that the grass is green and everything is rosy and clean. So we're going to be using some grass and some foliage, as well as painting the rim of the base with a lightish brown finish. Sorted. Now for the evil side. The Old Fall of the Necromancer source book is a good visual aid for this one. It's dark and dismal and no one wants to visit because there are spiders. Lots of spiders. And you can see the bases are darker on the top and so are the rims. We will do something along the lines of this, but I will leave out the snot green foliage, I think, as it looks unusual. For the bases, we want to give them some textures. And what better way than to give them some rocks? Here we have three different materials for this. On the left are cork pieces. You can either make them yourself by destroying a cork from a wine bottle or a tea coaster, or you can buy it as it is here from a hobby shop. The second is slate or small rocks. This could be purchased again from a hobby shop, or you can go outside and get some, but make sure you sterilize them first. And lastly, some milliput that was put into a rock mold and broken up into smaller pieces. But as this is a beginner's tutorial, I won't go through the process of making them. That can be done in a future video. But I will use the rocks to show what the end result will look like for your reference. And now we need something to stick on these rocks. So we have a couple of glues to use. They are polyvinyl acetate or PVA glue to others and super glue. For speed, we will go for super glue for this part. Simply apply a few random dots to the base top and we can sprinkle on the basing materials as well as positioning the milliput rocks into place. Once dry, we need to add the main texture for our ground cover. And for that, we are going to use bird sand. This stuff is awesome, as you have a fine sand mix with crushed up shells to make a great texture for a basing material. It glues well, it paints well, and it doesn't cost much for the amount that you get in a bag. For your convenience, in the description below, I will put links to all the basing products we will use in the video, should you wish to pick anything up for your basing or hobby needs. Using a cheap brush like this one, you can see mine has had better days, PVA glue was applied to the top surface. Try to avoid the rocks as much as possible if you can. The PVA glue used here was a cheap bottle of kids craft glue. It works just as well as the expensive stuff for this task. Some sand was sprinkled over the top and the excess was patted off with a finger. A tip here would be to rub off any sand from the base room as this will be painted later and you wouldn't want any lumps appearing. Once the bases are sanded, we are ready for the painting stage. The bases today are going to be painted in two ways. We will use army painted dirt splatter to paint the good side bases. We will also be using some artist craft paints predominantly for the evil bases. This acrylic paint was nearly the same price as my army painted miniature paint but it has a much larger volume and will last a lot longer when doing bases and scenery. So save your more expensive miniature paint for your miniatures. Another top hobby tip here is to paint the base color whilst the PVA glue is still wet. This will dry at the same time as the glue, saving you having to wait twice for things to dry. However, the best way to apply this is to dilute the paint with a little bit of water and dab your brush onto the base rather than using brush strokes. This will avoid moving the sand underneath and creating those unwanted bold patches. Once the bases are dry and the glue has set our sand, we can begin the next stage. As you can see, the craft paint didn't cover the milliput 100%, but that's okay for this stage, as we will paint it a different colour later on. Now we can start adding colour to the bases. Firstly, we are going to dry brush at Basilisk Brown for the first layer. For those of you that are new to the dry brushing technique, paint is applied onto a dry brush 
and then the majority is removed, like on this kitchen towel, leaving a small amount still in the bristles. The brush is then glided over the surface and the uppermost areas such as our sand and rocks will pick up the paint. Unfortunately, some paint is wasted on the kitchen towel, but then that's where using artist acrylic paints will come in handy, as they are less expensive. This second base was painted with some yellow ochre craft paint, and to be honest, you can't really tell the difference. For further experimentation, I decided to pit a miniature paint up against an emulsion paint in a tester pot to see if there will be any real difference. Spoiler alert, there was not. Except one is half the price of the other. I will let you guess which one. They were both dry brushed on, just like our previous stage. To give the bases some extra detail, the rocks were painted with dungeon grey. To make the rocks stand out a bit from the sand, some dark tone was applied over them. You don't need much paint here, just enough to cover the rocks nicely. And you can see that this mainly sits towards the edges of the rocks as it dries. To give them a bit of definition, some ash grey was dry brushed over the rocks as a final stage. As you can see, I like to use an old battered brush for basing and I would rather keep my lovely fine tipped brushes just for miniatures. And now for the base rims. These are to be painted first before our grass is glued on. Again, like the sand, we do not want any stray bits on the rims before we paint them, to avoid lumps. Slightly water down your paint here to thin them out and apply them onto the base rim. This will ensure a smoother surface. Now for the fun final part of the basing, and that's adding natural growth in the form of grass and foliage. A couple products are used here. The first is static grass. This comes in a variety of colors and lengths, and there are many, many brands that make them. Here we have a nice meadowy green color. The second product is foliage clusters by Woodland Scenics. And this is a slightly darker shade of green than our grass so they will complement each other nicely on our bases. Firstly, some PVA glue was applied in patches and the grass was then sprinkled on, just like the sand earlier. For the foliage, it was first torn into smaller chunks and using a cocktail stick, some super glue was added in patches ready for the foliage to be glued into position. I prefer using super glue rather than PVA for this, as it sticks the foliage much better and quicker. And that's our two bases for the good side completed. Now we will move on to evil. The evil bases are much darker than the good side counterparts. So we will start off with a dry brush of leather brown over our burnt umber craft paint from earlier, as well as using another emulsion paint for the larger base. The great thing about these tester pots is that there are many colours to choose from. And in some places like B&Q here in the UK, you could actually take your miniature paint into the store and they can colour match it for you as an emulsion paint in a larger pot. This can save you money in the long run, especially if you have a large project or some scenery and terrain to do. So once the dry brushing has been completed, you can see that there is not much difference between the two. Now it's time to move on to the rocks. Hopefully, whilst watching this video, you have seen the benefit of using alternative paints that are not traditionally used for miniature painting. And you may even pick some up for your next project. So my question of the day to you is, what paints will you pick up and for what project in the future will they be for? Pop your answers in the comments below because I would love to see what you guys are working on. After the rocks have dried, a wash of strong tone was applied to create the shaded areas. As you can see, this turned out nicely on the rock that came out of the mold, as they have a nice amount of detail on them. Finally, a dry brush of ash grey was used on the rocks for one of the bases. I even managed to mix a couple of emulsion paints to make a similar colour for the second base. And lastly, to make our evil side bases dark and, well, evil looking, oak brown and matte black were painted onto the rims respectively. 
To finish off the bases, they were given the same treatment of grass and foliage as we did before. And there we have it. We have completed Middle Earth Basing 101 by creating variations of good and evil bases. Which one is your favorite? Hopefully this has helped and you can also see how painting different colored rims can alter the look of a base. And if you have found value in the video today or simply like some of my tips and tricks, then please do let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe. And please do share with a friend who would also like Middle Earth content. Thanks for watching and until next time, keep on hobbying.